the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joyous feast. Joyous feast. Joyous feast. This morning we celebrate, we continue to celebrate, the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, we had liturgy this past Wednesday evening for that feast, which fell on Thursday, as it always does. Uh, and we celebrate and rejoice uh, that indeed God has been glorified, that our Lord has been glorified um, and has ascended at the right hand of the Father, uh, that we recognize in Him the one true King. Uh, we, uh, on, on Wednesday evening, I, I, I read from some of the Psalms that talk to us about this a bit, uh, how He is to ascend the holy mountain, uh, that He is the pure and blameless one, um, and also in doing so recollected some of the Psalms that we hear at Pascha, as well, that the King of Glory enters. Uh, and so it is this Sunday we continue that celebration uh, of the glory of our God who has ascended uh, to heaven. Uh, he, who is, who, he who held heaven within himself. Uh, we also commemorate this morning the Holy Fathers of the First Ecumenical Council held in 325 AD at Nicaea, uh, 318 uh, holy men who gathered together uh, to keep us on the right path, uh, to keep us headed in the right direction, uh, to uh, anathematize, condemn, set out those things that were not true, that were not holy, that were not good. In particular, at this council, the teachings of Arius, uh, rather self-righteous priest uh, that wanted to uh, argue against uh, the very Trinity that we know, uh, the very argue against the fact that God himself became man in Jesus Christ, uh, but rather wanted to see in Jesus merely one of the creation, higher than all else, yes, but still just a creature, not true God of true God, uh, not of one essence with the Father. Uh, and so it was at this council that these bishops gathered together uh, to, again, to keep us on the right path. Uh, they were doing so not simply from the position of knowledge, but also from uh, their own holy lives. They did so and made witness and, and bore witness uh, to the very life uh, that they had been given in Christ Jesus, uh, who is our Lord and God recognizing therein that God himself must become man, certainly, uh, that we might be raised up with him, that we might, in fact, ascend with him. St. Uh, Nikolai uh, Velimirovich, uh, and those who are here on Wednesday, I apologize, you have to hear this part again, says this. I don't really apologize, it's beautiful. They're beautiful words. Sorry. Thus did the one ascend to heaven who held heaven within himself. He who carries hell within himself will end up in hell, but he who bears heaven within his soul will ascend to heaven. And truly no one can ascend to heaven other than those who have heaven within, and no one can end up in hell besides those who have hell within. The familiar is drawn to what is familiar and unites with the familiar but it rejects what is not familiar. The familiar, St. Nikolai says, is drawn to what is familiar and unites with the familiar. It's these words, brothers and sisters, that I want to dwell on and meditate on a little bit here this morning. As we celebrate this great feast of the Ascension, as we, God willing, make ourselves familiar and draw near to the familiarity of God not to the familiar things of this world. This Ascension Day that we just celebrated, we celebrated on Wednesday uh, evening. It was a Thursday, obviously, the feast is Thursday, but Wednesday was the first of June. And I'm not sure about all of you, but my inbox, I get a lot of advertisements. I get all the stores that I've ever shopped at, probably, trying to email me something new each day. And this particular day, June 1st and June 2nd, and even unto June 3rd, my inbox was bombarded with emails that wanted to make us familiar with things of this world 
and not of God. It wanted to make us familiar with trying to take pride in perversity. It wanted to make us familiar with celebrating that which St. Paul speaks about in Romans chapter 1. He says this, Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Dearly beloved, we who gather together as the church are called to set ourselves apart from these things. To not become familiar with the things of the world, for the things of this world do not draw us to God. Truly, St. Nicholas says, no one can ascend to heaven other than those who have heaven within. And no one can end up in hell beside those who have hell within. Again, the familiar is drawn to what is familiar and unites with the familiar but it rejects what is not familiar. This past week, I was reminded how it is our role, our job, our responsibility as parents, as grandparents, as godparents, to make sure that our children and ourselves and our spouses and our loved ones become familiar with God, not with the things of this world. For the day will come, St. Nikolai continues, that day is not far off when all the righteous men and women who firmly believed in him throughout their lives will see him. And around him in the heavens will gather all those who were baptized on earth in his name, not only with water, but also with the spirit and fire. And they will enter into his joy, which the heavenly Father has prepared for all his chosen, and will inherit a joy that they have never known before. The holy men and women alike at the First Ecumenical Council in the church at that time set their lives as examples to those around them. They set their lives through precious stones as precious stones for us to look to, to emulate, to see and to draw near to. They lived lives full of Christian virtue, seeking after heavenly things, not after earthly things. Seeking after a spiritual vision, recognizing the very flatness of this world. And no, I do not mean a flat earth, but the very flatness of this world if we do not see the things that are heavenly. They sought after God and sought after his kingdom through spiritual vision. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, our Lord says to us. 
open your spiritual eyes and be glorious and see the glorious kingdom beyond, in which the king is your real father. And if you cannot easily open your inner sight, look through me. And this is not Jesus saying this, but this is St. Nikolai. I am your telescope about Jesus. I am your telescope. Believe me and follow me. Rejoice. And again I say, rejoice. We must seek after the heavenly things. Seek to be with our Father. Seek to become familiar with those heavenly things. Looking through Christ himself. True God, a true God. Begotten, not made, as we say in the Creed. Begotten of his Father before all ages. This one, and this is what those holy fathers fought for at the first ecumenical council. To recognize indeed that our King has ascended in glory to sit at the right hand of the Father. That he is indeed the one to whom we are called to be united. That they are one, Jesus says in John's Gospel that we just heard, as we are one. That is, that we all, that is the they he speaks of, that we all are one with him, with the Holy Trinity. Just as the Son is one with the Father. This is what we seek after. We seek it through spiritual vision, as those holy men and women did and have continued to do throughout this age. We seek it through moral discipline. I tell my catechumens each time we have a catechumenic class that comes in, that the point of this class is not so that you can learn everything to know about orthodoxy. Because you can't. I can't. Maybe that's why I haven't done the question and answer sessions. I feel like I've, I've given all the answers I know. My apologies. But the point of this class is that we might seek to be united to Christ. That's the point of our lives, dear ones. To be united to Christ. To seek after him. And in seeking after that through spiritual vision, that we might make ourselves worthy of that kingdom, that we might strive in our very lives to turn away from the things that St. Paul said to the Romans, but rather to hold before us that which is the very truth of God and of the world which he created. These are scary times, most likely no scarier than they were for St. Paul some 2,000 years ago. We do well to not also become proud of ourselves in how bad things are. If St. Paul said these things 2,000 years ago, he did so not as prophecy to us, although it applies to us, but also as recognition of what was happening on the ground then as well. And so he reminds and exhorts those Christians, the Christians in Rome, the Christians in Corinth, in Corinth all the Christians which continue to read his letters to this very day, to seek in our very lives to draw near to God, to rise above the things of this world, to not let ourselves get caught in becoming familiar with the things of this world. If for no other reason, dear ones, that is why I would encourage you to watch carefully what you watch on your TVs or phones or computers or tablets. Because what we watch and that goes in through our eyes becomes familiar to us. And what is familiar to us we draw near to. And may we be sure to draw near to God and not to this world. So we seek spiritual vision.
as our holy fathers and mothers had before us. We approach that through moral discipline, courageously climbing the ladder, step by step, through prayer, continual, unceasing prayer, through meditation on the Word of God, through obedience, obedience to the one who loves us, and in his love for us, calls us to draw near to him. Through humility, see, we should also recognize that St. Paul speaks, and I speak, not to the world, but to the church, to each of us that we might not get caught up in the ways of this world, but that our lives might be shining beacons to the world around us. That through our prayers, our meditation, our obedience, our humility, our meekness, these are not words that the world particularly likes. Through our meekness and self-restraint, through weeping, over our sins through watchfulness forgiveness of those around us forgiveness of those who aren't around us but that sometimes hold down and hold our hearts captivity through repentance and ultimately through sacrificing everything that we have even our own bodies to Christ. Last week we heard about some of the great early martyrs, holy women, Fotini, Lorena, Pereskeva, Irene, this holy family who gave even their own bodies, who trained themselves to abstain from every evil deed, in word, and even from every negative thought. For it's through our thoughts that come forth the evil deeds that hold us captivity. These holy men and women lived in this world, but lived as if they were not of this world. Not embarrassed. Not feeling guilty, but rather in joy, in humility, in repentance, and in love. Love towards God that framed and frames their love towards everyone around us. Spiritual vision, moral discipline... And finally, a competition, not a competition to see how fast we can go, how far we can throw, not a competition to see how close we can get to doing evil, but rather a competition in doing good. Dear ones, how wonderful this world would be if each of us in our own lives strove not in pride for our lives are defined by humility but in love if we strove in love to do better if we strove in love to follow and be obedient to the the very gospel of our Lord and Savior how much our path would be if we would but hear, listen, and do the very works of God. To strive to be more pious, not to look with judgment on others who are or are not. To strive to do good. To strive to give more not just here at the church, but to strive to give more to those who are in need around us. 
This is the competition in doing good to which we are called. To be eager to seek after God in piety. To be eager to spend more of our life and time in prayer. To be eager to be more merciful, more peaceful, more sympathetic, more forgiving, and more loving than others. Not for pride's sake, but for Christ's sake. Indeed, this Sunday, as we commemorate the Holy Fathers of the First Ecumenical Council, as we draw to mind their love, their mercy, their compassion, their moral discipline, and their spiritual vision, may we seek after these things as well. May we do so knowing that it is through these things that we draw near to God. That it is through these things that as we hear those words of the gospel, that the Son who has been glorified draws us to the Father, that we may be one as He is one. Watch what goes into your eyes and into your ears. Watch especially what goes into the eyes and ears of our children, our grandchildren, our godchildren. Hold near to the familiarity of God, not to the familiarity of this world. For as Christians, each of us wants to ascend with him who has ascended in glory to the right hand of the Father. May we seek and strive these things, dear ones, holy ones, called to be saints, as St. Paul continually reminds us, called to be saints. May we draw near to him who is the holy of holies and glorify him and through him the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages.